Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I'm recording on Christmas Eve during the day, as you can tell by the oh-so-joyously colorful chests that have been turned to look like Christmas gifts. And I did not know this, but apparently locked chests do not uh, change into the Christmassy design chests, which is interesting. So, anyway, uh, depending on when this video goes up, you'll have an idea of how far back I record versus when I actually post a video. So, today's episode, I need to obtain gas tiers, which normally would involve traveling to the nether, which, as you know, I'm really afraid of doing. Fortunately, there's sort of an out, and it turns out that Cacodemons will drop gas tiers as one of their drops. Which makes me think that they really should be called Cacodemon tiers, but, you know, whatever. So I've created another powered spawner, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a spawner of Cacodemons. Like that. Now, these Cacodemons are pretty deadly and dangerous. I need to get some glass. So let me take that out. I'm going to go down in here and I think, really don't think this is going to work well for me, but I'm going to take out, I wonder why I have that torch there. I'm going to take out my Enderman spawner and I'll replace it with the Cacodemon spawner. Active with signal only, run away because I wasn't ready for that. Okay, so let me see if I can kill these guys. Ooh, that one's dead. That wasn't too bad. This guy's a little bit tougher. But he's going down. Da -da. All right. Better armor. Ooh, better armor and better weapons makes this a more livable battle. But I didn't receive any gas tears, so I'm going to have to keep at it until I get one. There's a couple of gas tears. I see them right there. I'm going to go grab them. Oop. Run away. <laughs> oh, he still got me. Okay, I ended up with five gas tiers. Can't argue with that. So one of the first things I want to check out is this thing here called Botanical Brewing. This is from the Botania mod. And what it does apparently is it allows you to create brews, which are really potions that are just made differently. They're made through Botania. So to set things up first, I need a Botanical Brewery which looks like this brewing stand, rune of mana, block of mana steel, and some living rock. So let me make one of those. Okay, now that I have the brewing stand, I need to place it somewhere where it can receive um, uh, flower power. So I'm going to put it, I think, over here, but if I want it like that. Oh, that's pretty cool looking. I don't want it like that, though. Let me make a stand for it. Okay, so there is my botanical brewery. The next thing I need to make is some mana glass vials, which are made from mana glass, and these are made from just dropping glass into the alchemy pool, or to a mana pool. Okay, so now I have three mana glass vials. So the next step seems to be to add a vial which gets set on top of the brewery and then add all of the required ingredients. Now when you look through you'll see all the ingredients for different brews you can make. So you can see a brew of Fleet Feet is essentially a potion of swiftness giving you speed 2 and these are the ingredients that you need for it. Now what I'm interested in is this one. Brew of Revitalization which mimics a potion of regeneration. And for that I'm going to need a nether wart, a gas tier, and a glowstone dust. 
All right, so I think I have everything here. The first thing I do is place the mana glass vial. You can see it there. I've got nether wart. There's one ingredient. Glowstone dust. There's a third ingredient. And a gas tier. There's an ingredient. And now I need to aim a flower power at it. So we'll aim this guy here. And it's sending, it's sending the flower power to the botanical brewery. So that's a good sign. And it should, so let's see how long it takes to turn this into the, what was it called again? The Brew of Revitalization. Okay, it's done. A vial of revitalization. Regeneration 2 for 25 seconds. And you can see it says vial of revitalization 4, meaning that there's actually four doses of this in this one in this one vial. And of course it has to start raining. What time is it? It's about 2.45 in the morning. It's the normal time that I go to bed. So let's go ahead and go to bed. Of course, 6 o'clock in the morning is not what time I wake up, but yeah. Uh, can only do so much with Minecraft, right? So again, the uh, the vial of revitalization will give me 25 seconds of regeneration two, and I can do it four times. Go ahead and drink it. So there we go. I've got regeneration two. Of course, it's not doing anything now because I'm at full health anyway. But this is a convenient way to carry the equivalent of a regeneration potion. Uh, it's like I'm carrying four of them, but in only one inventory slot. And Regeneration 2 normally requires Glowstone, a Gas Tear, and a Nether Wart. So it's the same ingredients with... If you made this in a regular brewing stand, you would actually be making three of them with those ingredients. With this, I made four, but I also have to use the Flower Power to make it. So I'd say it's probably a fairly fair trade-off. But the next thing I want to look at is here in Bobbles, there's this item called, if you look on this page, it's the Tained Blood Pendant. But it's actually the Tainted Blood Pendant. And this says it allows you to store a brew in a condensed wearable state. Infusing this pendant with one and wearing it will apply the effect while it's worn for the cost of mana, depending on the power of the brew. So, um, it seems that I might be able to use this pot process to make myself a blood pendant that gives me regeneration, which would really be cool if that works. I'm not sure if it will, but I'm willing to find out. So I need four of these prismarine shards, a gas tier, and a mana diamond. The prismarine shards would be maybe the hardest thing to come up with. Of course, prismarine shards would normally be obtained, at least in the newer versions of Minecraft, by visiting one of those, uh, what is it called? The underwater temples, I believe? I have one prismarine shard that I must have gained, got from somewhere. But fortunately, Botania has a way that I can drop a nether quartz in with, uh, into a using the alchemy catalyst into a prismarine shard. So let's go ahead and grab three. I'm running low on nether quartz. That's not a good thing. And I keep forgetting I have teleporting abilities. And let's drop these guys in here. And there we go. I've got prismarine shards. So let me go ahead and make the rest of this tainted blood pendant. Okay, a gas tier, four prismarine shards, and a mana diamond gives me this tainted blood pendant. And you can see it's not yet infused. So my guess is I need another glowstone. Let me go grab that real quick. Go back over here. And I think we do this entire process, but with the blood pendant instead of a vial, a brew, a brewing, uh, what do you call it? A mana glass vial. So pendant on top. Glowstone dust, nether wart, and gas tear. Okay, and the flower power is flowing. This is definitely taking much longer than making the brews. It does say in here that, let's see, 
the cost increases by 10, uh, by 10 times. So it's using 10 times as much flower power in order to make this tainted blood pendant. But yes, it is taking quite a while. Okay, it's finally done. And tainted blood or or tainted blood pendant with a brew or revitalization regeneration too. It did take a long time to do that, but considering that this may be really very powerful for me to have, it's definitely going to be worthwhile. Now, one problem I'm going to notice that I have thought about already off the bat is this bobble is in the amulet slot, whereas, which is where I have my pyroclast pendant. I can only have one or the other. The pyroclast pendant, if you remember, is what Mr. Chicken recommended for me to wear because it'll keep me from being set on fire by mobs with the fiery uh, aspect for the infernal mobs. So I'm going to have to kind of decide which one to wear. What I think I want to try now, also, this Tainted Blood Pendant in the description in the Botania, the Lexica Botania, it does say here that um, you will get the effect while wearing it, but for a cost of mana. So the way I have mana on me, if you will, is through mana tablets. And these mana tablets can store flower power, essentially. So, for example, I've got here a... Uh, a mana pool that's got some flower power in it and if I use this I can change this to be sparing mana to items which means it will put the flower power that's in the mana pool into that mana tablet and I can see it draining here you can see that mana pool is going down and so if go ahead and grab I'm not gonna drain it all the way just yet and then you can see the little bar on the bottom of the mana tablet it's about halfway full or so in addition I'm always constantly wearing this band of aura and the band of aura generates a very 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 tiny amount of flower power which also gets stored into this mana tablet so that's currently at 477 I'm gonna put on this tainted blood pendant and I can already see I've got regeneration effect and Yes, it's going down fairly rapidly. As you can see that number uh, part of the uh, metadata, I think, or NBT data, I'm not sure how that works, is going. So that is interesting. It does use it quite a bit. So I'm going to swap it back out with my Pyroclast pendant. This does not use any flower power at all. So you can see it has stopped uh, draining, or it should be not draining anymore. There we go, it's going back up. Huh, it's fluctuating back and forth. That's very interesting. I wonder if any of these other items uh, use flower power. I never really read about that. Let me find out. Well, they don't say that they do, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, what I think I might be able to do, for example, let me go ahead and turn this on again for the Cacodemons. And get a couple of them or at least one of them or something to spawn in here there's two I'm gonna go ahead and go in and fight them actually I want them to damage me my armor actually holds up pretty well against a lot of things so that's also a good thing I'll go ahead and kill these guys off like so I've got two hearts of damage I can now swap out oops go over to my baubles and swap out my pendants like so and that will regenerate me and then I can swap them back out so that I have my fire protection yeah so maybe not the most useful of things I guess I could attempt to just wear the the blood pendant with regeneration all the time not so sure about that. I have a feeling that that's not going to work out uh, very well. But I'm going to go ahead and let that go ahead and suck up the rest of the flower power in there. And in fact, I also have another mana tablet here, which I haven't been using. But I could also uh, carry that along with me when I'm traveling, which will allow me to always have a pretty good supply of 
flower power, you know, no matter where I'm at, that I could then use my pendant with the revitalization in it, which which would be good. And I'm just derping my stuff around here. So I think realistically I have two good choices here. I can make these re revitalization brews and carry them with me, as well as I have the pendant which gives me regeneration as well so if I have you know stored up flower power in this mana tablet I can use that with the the, the revitalization pendant and that will keep me um, healed or that'll keep that'll regenerate me and keep me healed but if I run low on the flower power then I can always use one of the vial a, a vial and regenerate that way so Probably good to have both options just because of the limitations that the pendant carries with it. So I was reading through the Lexica Botania about Terra Steel, which is sort of the next level up from Mana Steel, if you will. Mana Steel is made from just dropping iron into a mana pool, but Terra Steel is made with a much more complex process, but it's uh, another it's a useful item that you can have in the Botania mod. In the past, you used to need a beacon in order to to uh, make Terra Steel, and so of course that meant uh, fighting and killing a Wither. But the recipe has changed; it's made it a little bit easier to get. What I need to make is this terrestrial agglomeration plate: blocks of lapis, a block of mana steel, runes of water, earth air, fire, and mana. And with that, I can begin to make some Terra Steel. So I'm going to work on that right now. So you need to create a pattern of lapis lazuli blocks and living rock. At least I think that's what it is. Yeah, living rock and lapis lazuli blocks. And then put this terrestrial agglomeration plate on top of it like so. And then I think I need to direct maybe a mana spreader at it. So let's do this. And in order to make Terra Steel, it requires a mana steel, a mana pearl, and a mana diamond for each one. So they're pretty expensive things to make. Okay, I threw the three of them on there. And it's now, the mana spreaders are now feeding mana to that terrestrial agglomeration plate. And in the Lexica Botania, it does say in here that it will take about it will take half of a full mana pool in order to create one piece of terra steel so pretty expensive not only building the 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 device itself but also the fact that you have to use a diamond a mana pearl actually a mana diamond and a mana pearl and a mana a mana steel ingot so all that plus then half of a pool's worth of mana to make this thing to make sorry to make one terra steel ingot it's a pretty pricey recipe well unfortunately the items despawned the mana pearl the mana diamond and the mana steel ingot despawned before the process was finished which really 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 sucks <laughs> um it says in the description here that sparks are the most effective way to give mana to this block. And so I think what I'll do is I'll make some sparks. Sparks are over here and they're made like this. Blaze powder, gold ingot, and two petals, mana petals of any kind. So I'm going to make a couple of sparks and try to figure out how they work. All right, so supposedly how this works is you can place a spark above a block that takes in mana, like this terrestrial agglomeration plate, and press a spark or place a spark over something that contains mana, like this mana pool here. And you can see sort of a line. If I use my wand of the forest on the spark and right click it, you can see there's like a line. So Basically, I think what happens is this spark will transfer flower power from this mana pool 
to this spark who will give it to this terrestrial agglomeration plate. So let me get the items again that I need in order to make a terra steel. And that's one iron ingot, one diamond, and one ender pearl. I've got to turn each of these into the mana equivalent. So mana steel ingot, ender pearl, and diamond, like so. And now I just need to drop these again over on that terrestrial agglomeration plate. So I'm going to change this back to pointing here, because I don't think I need that anymore. Just want to double check on that. So one, two, three. So yeah, it looks like it's doing it. And is this draining? It's draining a lot faster. Okay, so this is working definitely a lot faster. And the neat little particle effects as it, uh, or graphical effects or particle effects, whatever you call it, as the kind of the power is being used to infuse. Oh, there it goes. That was actually really, really quick. That is cool. All right, so I have a Terra Steel ingot. Why do I have a Terra Steel ingot? Well, I want to make something called a magic mirror, I think it's called. Let's go back here. And yeah, it's in here. It's called the mana mirror, my apologies. For that, I need a mana pearl, living wood tick, living wood stock, and I needed one Terra Steel ingot, which I have. So let me make this. Okay, and a mana mirror. Great. So why did I want a mana mirror? Well, in reading the in placing stuff down that doesn't need to go down. In reading the Lexica Botania, it says here that I can indirectly access the flower power in a mana pool with a mana mirror. To bind a mirror to a pool, simply shift right click a pool with the mirror. The mirror can't put flower power in or take flower power out of pools any other way. So if I shift right click on, let's say, this, um, no, yes, yes. Let's shift right click on this. So now the mana mirror is bound to that. So what I wanted to test is, let me put away this mana tablet and my band of aura, like so. We'll go out here. And I wanted to see if the flower power accessible through there will allow me to use my revitalization, revitalization pendant. So let's put that on. And well, I do have regeneration. Regeneration is going, so that's good. And again, I don't have a mana tablet. The only thing I have that I would be getting power from is this mana mirror. So that seems to be working the way that I thought that it would. So let's see, can we see if this is draining? Looks like it probably is draining, it's hard to tell, but it's not gonna drain anywhere near as much, I would imagine. Let me go, let me go fight some things and see what happens while I have this mana mirror with the revitalization thing going on. Oh, look at this guy uh, uh like there's a zombie on a zombie horse oh and he's uh he's an infernal one too ah, guy die so i can see i'm getting damaged but the regeneration is working and i can't get this guy to die come on you're almost dead oh, he keeps healing he's got life steal can't let him hit me oh this guy's hitting me come on oh y'all want some huh there we go did you drop anything good? No, not really. Let's go back out here. Oh, Wither Witch. Wither Witch with its Wither Cat. Urgh. Oh, that cat is deadly. Look at him go. Come on. Oh, these guys are hard to hit, too. They're so fast. Come here. Oh, why can I not hit you? Withering effect has got me. Got the cat. Get this witch out of the way. Got him. Got her, I guess. And I'm still withered. But I'm also regenerating, so it's actually doing okay. So yeah, I am, you know, keeping up on being uh, power, uh, healed through the mirror, which is good. 
a whole bunch of guys over here, including a creeper. Oh, those, oh, these cats. Well, I tell you, these cats are bad news. This is, these wither witches and wither cats are from the Ender Zoo, Ender, I think it's called the Ender Zoo mod. So let me take this guy out, got him. All right, what else we got? Got another, oh, creeper, take you out, all right. Let's get this guy. Oh, there's a whole bunch of cats down there. Holy moly. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. How many pet cats do you have, witch? Jeez. You old cat lady is what you are. Keeps harming me with these potions. He's dead. And come on, cat. Cat's dead. So, oh, there's another witch there. Is there like a witch spawner down there or something? Crazy. Okay, so... I'm, I can still take damage. I'm not completely immune to getting hurt. Regeneration is working, but it's not going to be, you know, perfect or anything. It's not going to keep me from, from getting hurt if I do something incredibly stupid like charge into a bunch of wither witches and wither cats. So yes, so I'll be able to have regeneration effect uh, from being linked up to that mana pool through this mana mirror. And that is going to be pretty nice and make things a lot easier for myself. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. As I said, thank you so much for joining me. I do appreciate it. If you have comments, please leave them for me down below. I look forward to hearing from you. And if you have any questions, I will definitely try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time.